I'm Rafi. I work in story. I'm an independent showrunner, executive producer, and creative entertainment executive. I originate and develop stories for animation and live action, and help tech companies bring meaning to their amazing technology through character-driven storytelling. I also help traditional media and entertainment studios advance their storytelling and production capabilities with XR, real-time, and virtual production. Right now, I'm creating a scripted animated show for children, featuring vibrant characters who solve problems through the power of art. The show is called Art Squad, and in this Pro Art Master session, I'm delighted to share some of my creative process. I'm making Art Squad for children aged six to eight. I don't have a crew, I'm doing it mostly on my own, and if I'm honest, I'm still figuring out how to do it. You see, I'm not a 3D modeler, nor am I a VFX artist, but I do love to draw. Often characters and stories in my head, stuff around the house, my desk, or moments at home. Of all the ways humans visualize ideas, I find working on paper the least uncomfortable. I usually do it with a pencil. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that I'm not a TD. I'm not adept at CG production pipelines. I have worked on many productions in my career, but I was directing actors and my crew was filled with genuinely talented artists and specialists who brought their expertise in VFX. My focus has always been character, storytelling and world building. I tend to explore my ideas for visual storytelling and conveying the vision through drawings. So embarking on making a CG animated show without a crew is kind of daunting, but I'm discovering ways to overcome my limitations in this space with the help of real-time tech. As you'd expect, hardware is pretty important. I'm creating Art Squad primarily on my ASUS ProArt desktop workstation with a Z690 chipset, an Intel Core i9-1200K CPU, and an NVIDIA RTX A6000 GPU. And it's pretty rock solid. But this workflow is proving scalable too, performing well on my ASUS ProArt StudioBook laptop with an Intel Core i9-11900H CPU and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 GPU. The spectacular PA32 UCG supports multiple HDR formats and even comes with a hood to guarantee color consistency at whatever time I work. In essence, software and hardware come together like a fun and powerful box of tools that facilitates virtual world building in an artist-friendly system. For instance, NVIDIA Omniverse, USD and Unreal Engine are the backbone of my production process because I can review results and make changes in real time. Designing 3D character models in VR makes pre-production and look dev possible for an artist like me. I'm also taking advantage of common virtual production techniques like immersive scene layout, virtual cameras, and motion capture, so I can be more spontaneous through the process, all of which is powered by ProArt hardware that enables me to create more and troubleshoot less. Here's the thing, I'm just a storyteller trying to realize a world for my characters to inhabit. Art Squad is set in a junior school art classroom where art materials, objects, and equipment form a lively neighborhood, a colorful community of budding artists. Let's meet the squad. Artina, the leader, is an art history buff who brings a wealth of knowledge and insight to the group. She's a skilled researcher and often brings historical context to the squad's creative projects. Rivette will inspire by demonstrating art techniques and is always looking for new ways to express her creativity. She has a keen eye for detail and a passion for experimenting with different mediums. 3D is a kind and compassionate individual who uses art therapy as a means to promote well-being, healing, and uncovering underlying feelings or concerns that plague the squad. She is passionate about the transformative power of creativity and believes in making space for everyone to explore their emotions and express themselves freely through art. A bit of a mentor character, I guess. Then there's the youngest member of the squad, Figgy, whose spontaneous performance art inspires others to push boundaries and embrace their own unique voices. Pup Pup is a lovable and playful character who serves as a class pet. Made entirely out of putty erasers, Pup Pup is incredibly expressive and animated with a boundless energy that is, frankly, infectious. My creative vision for Art Squad requires a photorealistic world juxtaposed with worlds sprung from fantastically expressive artwork. 
Artina's superpower is to literally dive into any artbook and immerse herself in a world constructed from the artwork. There, she meets and speaks to the artist. Experiencing the artist's worldview usually helps Artina come up with ideas to solve a problem in the real world. That's what she brings to the art squad. She's modeled entirely in VR using Masterpiece Studio Pro. Compared to traditional 3D modeling software, sculpting in VR is a lot easier and quicker. It feels like a natural extension of drawing. You also get a better understanding of the 3D form because you're immersed in the same virtual space as your creation. Hand tracking in true 3D space also offers way more nuance for an artist than say a flat screen with a keyboard mouse or even a stylus. Rivet is based on stop motion armatures, the skeleton inside posable puppets. Rivet's body parts are a mix of metal and wood, a well-loved eraser for a head, pushpin eyes, and a single paperclip spectacle. Again, Rivet is modeled entirely in VR in the same way as Artina, but a bit more intricate. The immersive grid and alignment tools in VR are essential for modeling machine parts like this. Working in layers, helps me keep track of things too. I usually stand when I'm working in VR. In fact, my whole body gets involved, which helps me a lot when I'm trying to work out a three-dimensional design, you know, scale and proportion and where to place things. Sculpting Rivette's hair was actually a bit like working in Play-Doh, quite appropriate. Creating organic forms is a real advantage of sculpting in VR. As with real clay, I lay down a rough mass, then shape it, pull it, flatten it, cut into it, and smooth the edges until I arrive at the design. Working in VR takes the guesswork out of rigging too. I simply reach into the figure and place bones exactly where they should go within the form. The right combination of VR tools with traditional ones has transformed my capabilities in look development. This character is called 3D. She's one of the most abstract character designs in the show, made out of squishy, sponge-like knitted blocks. I wanted her to have the charm and simplicity of a handmade toy for preschoolers. So using this VR app, Tavori, I explored designs the way a child might play with blocks in nursery. Tavori's interface and primitive 3D shapes offer a delightful way to rapidly prototype your design ideas, not to mention playful. You know, you can grab, place, stack, rearrange, recolor, resize, reshape, all very intuitively and naturally with direct control in VR. This is a perfect method for designing this character. The way I model a 3D character has become instrumental to achieving my intended design and ultimately the feel of the show. For the art direction, I want a warm and inviting tone with a tactile feel. The characters have bright personalities and explore their world confidently. A world representing real props and environments lit in a way that is expressive but plausible in real life. So why the realistic look? Because I need to contrast it with the stylized art worlds that Artina visits. I use Omniverse to depict the real world and Flare to depict the art worlds. Flare is a plugin for Maya that allows you to transform your 3D scene with any art style you want in real time, right there inside Maya's viewport. When the squad isn't traveling through paintings, their adventures tend to take place in school where the lighting, materials, and texturing is faithful to real life. The classroom isn't mundane, at least I'm trying to make it enticing. I want to represent the wonder and excitement of learning art and making stuff at school. Funnily enough, I'm making the props for the show using bits and bobs, like out of a box of craft materials, except it's all virtual. You know, wrapping thread around the pin and pulling it across the board in VR. At one-to-one -one scale, it's the size of a full-size guitar, at least how it would be in real life. Making adjustments to the assembled parts, like bending paper clips or creating a wire sculpture, except it's all virtual. And if you've ever worked in those mediums in real life, you'll know what it's like to kind of twist and bend and create contortions uh, in a very intuitive and tactile manner. This makes for a surprisingly satisfying creative process. Crafting props this way feels like a call to join in, like I'm a participant or character within this fictional world I'm creating. With the technical barrier considerably lowered for me, I just muck about and make something for the joy of it. And that's when I enjoy art the most. This way, I get a sense of immediacy and spontaneity in my CG production process. It's quite rewarding, which motivates me to keep going. I often do scene layouts in VR too, 
We all know virtual production is accelerating live action production. What most interests me, however, is how that same tech can be even more pivotal for the animation industry. Here, I'm using a Vive Pro with Omniverse XR with real-time ray tracing to rapidly explore ways to dress the set. The ability to visualize alongside my writing process inspires story ideas and helps me discover new moments of character development, especially as I'm in the scene too. So it's streamlining my design iterations and proving helpful to my story development process, which is really exciting. For motion capture, I'm using a Perception Neuron Suit which reliably streams motion to Unreal Engine, again, in real time. Much like a live action shoot, I get to improvise and experiment in a way that is seldom affordable to animators. Here, I'm using an iPhone to drive character expressions. My characters might have unusual proportions, but the performer's movements can be retargeted I can experiment with performance choices and explore different takes and options I simply wouldn't have the time to if I only use keyframe animation. I'm essentially adopting virtual production techniques for an animated series. Whether capturing on the soundstage with my ProArt StudioBook 16 or in the studio with my 3XS workstation, a solid Wi-Fi connection is critical. Both machines have awesome Wi-Fi connectivity. I've never suffered latency or drop frames with either of these. Activating live link in Maya, Substance, and UE5 populates the set lit and shot in Omniverse, which updates in real time when I make changes in any of the apps, running simultaneously on my Scan 3XS workstation, which is powered by a ProArt Z690 motherboard. Thanks to USD and Omniverse, these apps are in a constant live state, accelerating my ability to realize this show uh, as an indie creator. So the software simplifies the production process for me, but is only as reliable as the hardware that powers it. These apps are constantly exchanging data in real time through an Omniverse Nuclear server that runs locally on the machine. And when I connect to a cloud server for collaboration, I get excellent performance thanks to the onboard ethernet connection. The same could be said about data transfers to my network attached storage. The regular way of creating a CG animated show has too many technical barriers for me to enjoy it, let alone sustain a production as an independent. Creativity isn't about working for a living, it's about playing for a living. I love my ProArt hardware because it removes those barriers and powers my creative process so it stays fun, intuitive and rewarding. Making Art Squad is such a blast because ProArt enables me to create it my way.